Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Did y'all learn something? I'll make sure I'll uh, everything, I'll make sure I'll uh, get them other definitions too, okay? So, hey, the book says, be not conformed to this world. You hear that? And before the Israelite faith what was our mind only conformed to? And the book says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. How you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. Well, how do you do that? Just simply believe the truth and, and hate the lie. Easy, isn't it? Yeah, until you live it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Spiritual warfare. Matthew 4, 24. And his fame went throughout all of Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments. Notice, not only divers diseases and what? Torments. torments. And those who were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic. You know we got a bunch of lunatics walking around today. Now you think about all this for a second and look at the mind control that they're still employing today. We know that we've had a barrage in this country of soft target shootings. School shootings. You know what I mean? Movies, theaters, um, grocery stores. You know, soft target. But lately, there's been an influx of them. So why all of a sudden, everybody pops off at one time and decides to go stark raving man to start shooting the shit out of people? See what I mean? And what triggers them? But nobody's going to report that a black man was getting ready to enter into, in South Carolina, getting ready to enter into an elementary school and shoot the children, but this white woman saw him going in with his gun and shot the shit out of him and killed him. You don't hear nothing about that. The news media will not report that. You'll never hear about that. And stories like this happen a whole lot more than these school shootings and all these other terror alerts and everything else. Now, the, down there in Texas, what is Udelaide, Uvalde, now all these police officers, they got, to, they got to fire the gun against them now because they withheld parents, fathers and mothers from going into that school and getting their children and let this gunman just go carte blanche, crazy wild, shooting everybody like, and he, was, like he was playing duck hunt. Because they were unwilling to do the job that they said they signed up for, but they were willing to fight against you from getting to your child. See, my mindset is, if my child is in there and you in my way, <laughs> I'm sorry, no actor in a uniform it's going to stop me. Ain't happening. 
you become the problem. I'm hope and pray one day we don't have to ever test that boast. But at least we know we don't have to test it because our children are homeschooled. <laughs> now, homeschool used to be something that, that the world or the United States despised, looked down upon. Yet and still they win in every spelling bee, all the mathematic competitions and everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? They hate it. But then when COVID hit, all of a sudden it was celebrated. <laughs> now y'all understand what I mean by mental gymnastics? So what the Father has done with us in, in this last time, in this wicked generation, is really truly paramount. Because he has literally separated us and severed us from the people of this world. So I learned a long time ago that people don't want you to listen to people like me because they want you to continue on under the deceptive influence that you've always been under. And they don't and Satan fights hard for you coming to the knowledge of the truth. So that's why they call people like me crackpot, fanatics, lunatics, deceivers. And of course, I always say, well, let's test, let's test this boss then. Now you don't see too many people want to knock down my door either. You getting it? So the gig is up. The remnant is being saved. <laughs> and if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, you ought to give him praise today. You ought to give him praise. Because he's deserving of it. I as a man have a voice but the Holy Spirit has a voice as well and you had to hear that voice oh yeah those of us that's on the journey we know that voice hallelujah so those who are possessed with devil those that were lunatic and those that had palsy and he healed them now the problem here is the word possessed I don't mean to be a stickler, you know what I mean, but you got to bring it out, though. You follow me? They are monze. They are monze. They are monze. Demonized. Simply means to be demonized or have a, or to be vexed with. So you mean tell me that you don't never get vexed? So, you need to realize just because you vex don't mean that you in your right mind, lunatic. <laughs> vex will be possessed with or devils. So these people were vexed. When you are vexed, you are vexed by a spirit. Something that is contrary to truth. I, I said it once, said a thousand times, it's easy for you to be able to tell Satan's kingdom. Real easy. If you, since the majority of people in the world are built on feelings and emotions, how does your kingdom make you feel? The fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentle meekness. Throw in some other happiness. You understand what I mean? Makes you want to dance, make you want to shout, make you want to, you know what I mean? But then, how does Satan came to make you feel? Heavy, depressed, vexed, sorrowful, condemned. You hear that? Yeah, good ones, yeah, anxious, fearful. And you still don't know at any given time in your feelings. Which kingdom is influencing you at any given time? You got to be kidding me. 
So if you feel heavy, did that come from y'all? I mean, Paul said, if I made you sorry or sorrowful, I'm glad that I did. Because when I did it, I made you sorrowful after a godly sort. What? A source that will lead you to repent. And then Satan's kingdom, whenever you're vexed by a spirit, it never leads you to repent. It leads you to mope, leads you to gripe, leads you to, to complain. So how is it that we live this stuff every day and we're totally void and absent when his kingdom is pressing and his hand is pressing against us? But then, nowadays in this world, they don't dress up the word repentance. Um, your issue. Uh, you just naughty. No, you just sin. <laughs> and believe it or not, sin feels good and sin feels bad. How do I know that? Because the book said there's pleasure in sin but just for a season. But the Bible says that it's the goodness of Yah that leads you to repent. We get this. But yet, we so slow to repent. Do we not know that God is good? We know Yah is good, right? And if he's leading us to repent, we know he's good, right? But why are we so apprehensive about repenting then? Why we move so slow? Why all of a sudden, we run like a rabbit, but now in this, we're running like a turtle. Or a snail. I'll tell you the reason why. Because there's that part in your house of an unregenerated nature that opposes the kingdom of Yah. That still wants to have at least that measure of control over you. That's how Satan's kingdom is. You understand? At least I hope so. So the next time when you start, when you want to sit up and be mesmerized by all these feelings and all these digressions. Figure out why you're there. Not to, just don't sit there and stay there. If you stay there for two days, that's two days that you can't get back for serving y'all. Well, then we have an indictment in the book. Whomsoever you yield your member servants to obey, that's who servants you are. That's how y'all talks. We getting this? So basically, if you vexed, that means you are possessed. That's what the English word would use. The best word to be using for that possess, or is to be vexed by a devil. Which is the best translation? Demonze or demonze or demonized. Demonized. So basically, you're demonized. To be vexed is to be demonized. Well, people don't, they would like the word possessed because we have these Movies like Poltergeist and, and all this other stuff. People acting stupid. Heads with legs walking down thing. and Everybody, ah! So how many times you going to look at a scary movie and get scared when you know what's getting ready to happen? <laughs> I mean, I would look at a scary movie so I go, this don't make no damn sense. I know what's getting ready to happen. getting ready to jump out of the closet. Watch. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is stupid. I ain't looking at another one of these damn things. Like wasting my time. <laughs> you know what's going to happen anybody ever heard of the movie Texas Chainsaw Masters what's going to happen a guy's going to take a chainsaw and just go around sawing up people how scary is that but it makes you scared don't know the music, the drama the don't know don't know don't know don't know, don't know. Don't know. But you're sitting in the assembly saying, y'all's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. <laughs> and then go soak yourself on something that's going to cause you to be fearful. 
I tell you, lunatic. I'm telling you, lunatic. <laughs> Sorry, folks, but it's just the truth. To be demonized means to be under the control of one or more demons. Example, Saul, the first king of Israel. 1 Samuel 10, 6, and the spirit of Yahweh will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and will be turned into another man. Now this is the spirit of Yahweh that come upon him, right? Isn't that amazing? See, today they make fun of us when we turn into another man. You know what I mean? See, the ones with the argument is always at the mercy of the ones with the experience. We have the experience, they have the argument. We know what we're talking about. You can't even look into what we're talking about. You understand? And it was so, verse 9, skip it down, and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, y'all gave him what kind of heart? Heart different than the heart he had. Is that right? What happened when we were born again? If you never experienced this other heart, then you ain't never been born again. And all those signs came to pass that day. Now, you can be a believer and have the Holy Spirit get through, get through, and you will forfeit God's manifest presence and will become invaded by demonic spirits. We just got to finish this. Giving a testimony about what Saul did. He was turned into another man. Isn't that right? And y'all gave him a new heart. A different heart. Is that right? This is what we are watching what happens. Or this is what we are watching happens during this dead season. This past dead season. Uh oh. It didn't look like it earlier but we know what it says. But that's, that's the difference between, between going from Windows and Mac. But the spirit of Yahweh departed from Saul. Oh no. Once saved always saved. No, I would never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> David said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. But they say, no matter what you do, you're going to glory. But the Spirit of Yahweh departed from Saul. And then, so that means by divine fiat, that if you have been filled with his spirit, because you already, you only had your spirit. So you can you, you, you need to be filled with your spirit. Some has to replace that void. An evil spirit. Huh? And an evil spirit from Yah troubled him. Huh? And Samuel said, Have Yah as great delight in burnt sacrifice, I mean burnt offers and sacrificing as in obeying. obeying the voice of Yahweh. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. That's why he would say, to what use is the multitude of your sacrifices? Don't be sitting there building me no altars, making sacrifices, I cannot wait with it. It's just a waste of time. Your heart is not even in it at all. Huh? For rebellion is as sin of what? And stubbornness is as what? Iniquity and mm. again. For rebellion is as the sin of what? And we, we don't hardly ever call nobody a witch today. Now, I do it all the time. That's witchcraft. That's control. That's manipulation. And stubbornness is as 
iniquity and idolatry. So stubbornness is iniquity, lawlessness, and it is idolatry. So you don't need a statue to commit idolatry. All you gotta do is just be stubborn. Don't being stubborn make you rigid. Statue. <laughs> so during this past dead season, we're watching the infestation of deceived demonic spirits which have occupied those who have been pretending to be Israel through the lust of their own hearts manifested. First Samuel 15, 23, because you have rejected the word of Yahweh. Wait a minute. You know I saw he never made claims that he rejected the word of Yahweh. Huh? Hey, I want you to go down and kill everything. Don't leave nothing. Don't, don't spare nothing. Kill it all. So I'm a different man. You, you, you told me kill it all. The ants, the flies, the cockroaches, the fleas, the ticks. They've all been dead. He said kill it all. We comb in heaven and earth. Hell, we even digging in the ground for the snakes and getting them too. Damn snake could be an Amorite. Or a Philistine. <laughs> <laughs> we getting them all. But he saw people's person. You would, I'll tell you, you all would have loved Saul. You know, he, was a, he was the modern day politician. I'm telling you, he was for y'all. Man, I'm telling you. Oh, man, we'll take the best of this and just go ahead and give it over to the people. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about the people. This king, oh, he's going to make a deal with me. Ain't no big deal. All of a sudden, they're going to prop. Wait a minute. What's this out here? Yeah. Anybody, oh, ain't nothing cheap. Cheap. What did y'all tell you? Yeah. Didn't he say kill it all? And who in the hell is this? Yeah. See, that's why people don't like me because I talk like that. Yeah. They're going to hate you too when you're standing for God. So you mean to tell me you kept the damn sheep and you left this damn asshole alive? So Sammy said, okay, good. Watch yeah. this. Take yeah. a short run him yeah. through. Yeah. And mind you, Samuel loved Saul. Yeah. And he got to the point that, well, I mean, he didn't love him more than y'all. But he got to the point that he, man, I, I forget you, man. Yeah. <laughs> you finished. Yeah. So, you think about this. How lightly we take rebellion. In any form. You look and see how in this culture how we relax obedience. Think about it. To the point it doesn't even bring about a conviction. You think about that. Because you have rejected the word of y'all, he has also rejected you from being king. Now, did y'all reject him from being king? Yes, he did. He still kept his kingship, but y'all rejected from being king. You hear me? That means he no longer has y'all's protection. He, knows, he, he no longer in the kingdom of y'all. Remember, the gifts and calling of y'all are without repentance. He didn't take his guilt. He didn't take it from him. He let him keep it. Are right, you following me? Ha! Huh. <laughs> and it came to pass that when an evil spirit from Yah, that's right, because he sent it, was upon Saul that David took a harp and played. Harp sounds good. I want, you know, I bet I could start singing some songs in the key of K. It'll make spirits manifest. Has anybody ever heard bad singing before and you just couldn't take it? <laughs> you just could not take it. <laughs> You're like, you got to stop this badness, man. Something, somebody set her down, set her ass down. <laughs> y'all ain't never been, well, y'all ain't been around a lot, have you? 
I've been in some bad places, boy. Woo wee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In some bad places. Y'all remember Win Worley? He could just sing and demons would start manifesting. And he was a bad singer, too. I mean, he, he could not sing. He had no anointing in singing either. It was just terrible. I mean, they may have it up on YouTube. Look at Win Worley singing deliverance. He just starts singing them old Baptist hymns, and boy, I mean, he is off. You, hey, you may want to have a couple of Kleenex and trash can with you. Because some bad singing, boy, it's going to get you. You you gonna find out how strong you are in the spirit. You can listen to that whole service, boy. You doing good? That's the challenge, isn't it? It's a it's bad. I'm t- it's bad. Even though he's singing about the blood, it is bad. It is bad. <laughs> so David took a harp and played with his hand, and so Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Why? The spirit didn't want to hear that pleasant music. First Timothy 4 1 says, Now the spirit frequently expresses that in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith because they're listening to seducing spirits and teachings of devils. Speaking in lies and hypocrisy, having their having been branded on their own conscience. Teacher, let's go to Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 through 11. Now, we're in the, the days that there's a lot of people doing a lot of prophesying. Hmm? I had some people, there's a man and a woman uh, last November uh, prophesied death over me. So did. I still had the videos right there on my YouTube, right on my front page of my computer. Because you know what's going to happen if I'm still here December, I mean, January, I mean uh, November the 13th. You know who's coming out, don't you? And I'm going to still be here. <laughs> you know how I know? Because the devil did the talking. <laughs> and of course, y'all know what I did, right? I just send it back, but I'm going to do a whole lot more to send it back come that day, though. Hmm? The same death they wished on me, I'm, now I'm going to turn it on them. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. So I'm patiently waiting. Hmm? So sometimes I get a pain in my toe, I go, oh, it could be the big one. Boy, God's bullet right there. Hmm? Somebody don't even know me. Just got tanked up with a demonic spirit and just thought they just going to come and attack the man of God. Oh, you in trouble. Yeah. Ooh, they in trouble. So then, Elder Rufus got a hold of the video and saw it and stuff, and he actually called them out. So Elder Rufus started quoting these very same scriptures to them. You know what they did? Took the video down. I'm like, damn, if you're a prophet, man, let the word stand. Read, teach. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give you a sign or a wonder. Uh Only one problem. All these false prophets today, none of them got no power to give no signs and no wonder. All they got is just words. Read on. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. Whereof he spoke unto you saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For Yahweh your Elohim proves you to know whether you love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after Yahweh your Elohim and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. Y'all hear that? What is, anybody know what cleave means? That, 
I mean, that's how close he wants you to be with him. Read. And that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death. Shall be put to what? Death. Hey, y'all see the reason why I love the law? For real. I'll be listening to some of these um, people that are out there that are 2A advocates, which we all are. You know what I mean? But they'll get out there and say, well, you just don't know how traumatizing it is if you ever have to shoot someone. And, and all. I'm like, say, y'all, you just done made me just a killer then. Is somebody trespassing against my property? Huh? Or, or, or trying to harm one of my brothers or sisters. You, you mean tell me I'm going to have some torment and fear and anxiety in my heart for putting somebody six feet under? Oh, no, I'm going to sleep. I promise you I'll sleep good. It would be just like me shooting that rabbit yesterday. I mean, at least I did give the rabbit the, rabbit the dignity to be left above ground so a predator could come and eat it. I came out this morning, the rabbit's still there. I was like, man, the predators must not be hungry because usually they clean up after that. I got this brand new pistol, right? And I was probably like, probably like about for me to put a rod. That's a pistol. It's got a red dot. Are you following me? So I, I can't use the red dot because the red dot ain't zero. So I had to use the iron sights. So when I went outside, I had this guy and somebody said, Tell, let him come out outside so he can keep, can, he, you know, hear the pop. I said, oh, a rabbit. <laughs> Did you get it? Go oh, look. He said right there, he moving. Yeah, that's called nerves. You know, you shoot somebody. <clears throat> you follow me? Boy, that was a good shot. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a tough shot with a pistol. It really is. Hmm? Gideon could probably make that shot. No, I said probably. So I guess we got to put a toy rabbit over there and see if we can hit it in it. <laughs> Come on, teach. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from Yahweh Elohim. Whoa, 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 whoa. You see what I mean? That's where I get so upset. Because you put out an indictment like that, you start calling me all kind of false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, all this other stuff. What you're doing is seeking to turn away people from the faith. Because what you're preaching and teaching, ain't nobody getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Nobody's keeping the commandments. Nobody's living set apart. Nobody's doing what the book says do. It's serious business. Words are very weighty. Read on. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust you out of the way which Yahweh, your Elohim, commanded you to walk in. That's the reason why Elder Rupus went after because he said, now hold on, wait a minute, damn it. There's one thing for you to call me all kind of names and all like that other stuff and, and make up all kind of fairy tales. That's fine and good, but when you start talking about you prophesying death, you will die this year. Well, we're going to see. You better believe that. We're going to find out who the man of y'all is, though, ain't we? Read. See what happens is, is don't read it. What happens, people? They get they, they come over and watch videos and they don't like my mannerism. Forget about the truth I'm saying. People assume that they will love Paul mannerism. Y'all need to go read Paul again. <laughs> and they, they assume that they will love Moses.
Y'all read these things just like you're reading these little cartoons. People don't understand that, you know, King David was a man, a man of war, a bloody man. You know what that means? No nonsense. You getting that? We've been watching so many cartoons. Then the word, when the reality of a, a real true Israelites come to fruition and stuff, people just get all stirred up and start hating the ones they should be loving. It's crazy, isn't it? Sorry, y'all, y'all didn't say you Israelite would be soft men like Benny Hinn. They asked me, what kind of preacher are you? I said, what kind of listener are you? I've been in some serious dialogues with preachers and their wives. And the wife couldn't start controlling herself. And I, I'm sorry, but I'd I flat out tell you, get your bitch under control. What well, I, I said, I'll tell you what, if she get out of control, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take what I will, what I want to do to her out on you. <laughs> Mother Carol, have I ever been in some dialogue like this? To say Mother Carol be sitting up there shaking her. <laughs> she does. He don't well, when he get into beast mode, it's over with. But when you go back and look at it, you find out how did y'all sure deal with the, the scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites? See, we're reading a translation. We we ain't reading real dialogue. He didn't fool around with them. No, 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 no way, shape, fast, or form did he. They hated him, and he didn't like them either. Mm. Hatred is so real that they're still trying to fabricate his resurrection still till the day saying that he didn't resurrect. That's why the Christians are so stupid. How are you going to sit up there and, and call that Israel over there as support of people that don't even believe in the, uh, your so-called Messiah? Lunatic. Lunatic is lunacy. It's crazy. Come on, teach. So shall you. Put the evil away from the midst of you. If your brother, the son of your mother, or your son or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your friend, which is as your own soul, entice you secretly. Entice you do what? Secretly. Come on. Saying, let us go and serve other mighty ones, which you have not known, you nor your fathers. Namely, the, of, of the gods of the people which are around about you, nigh unto you, or far off from you. That's what happens when people return to Christianity. People entice some people to go back to Christianity. First thing they do, boy, is go put up, put up a Christmas tree. With women, the first thing they do, head covering, come on. <laughs> That's your freedom, right? Liberty, head covering, no covering. No. First thing, head covering, goes to the high. Showing they ain't no ain't, ain't in no Hebrew, they don't give a damn about culture, tradition, or nothing. It, it all goes away. Every bit of it. But I know one damn thing, if we put your ass over in the desert, I'll guarantee you'll put that head covering on. <laughs> Am I right? But come here, bro Ray. <laughs> come here. <laughs> don't the book say if a man travel much, he know much. Do the women run around with they wish they could be California hair showing all over the place in the desert? No, sir. The men don't even run around with their hair showing. <laughs> Bless you, my brother. You see what I'm talking about? Lunacy. Lunatics. And that's where the culture originated from. So you got people in this culture trying to fight against the Bible because it's an Eastern culture. 
And they try to put that Western perspective spin on it and make everybody feel good in their conscience by being disobedient to the word. You people look, we've been told, you people look like Muslims. I said, then what make what about us look make us look like Muslims? Hmm? Why? Because we cover it? You people remind me of people who have lost their damn mind. Why? They were naked and they were afraid. Lunatic. Take off your clothes, you feel good. No, you put on clothes, you're afraid. You're naked, you're afraid. You, you put, you, it depends on what clothes you put on. You go out here and you wear a two-piece bikini to Walmart, you feel good. I ain't never seen the lunacy of America before in my life. You go to the beach, people got G-strings on. And uh, what they call thongs, yeah. things piercing them with the, in, the, in the middle of their turret cutter. Cheeks hanging out all over the damn place, titties slinging everywhere, yeah. and everybody's just fine. Yeah. You go to the store, and you wear your chest all out with a t-shirt and stuff. Why are you looking at me? Lunatic. <laughs> Lunatic. You can't come to your door with a bra and the panties on, but you can go and, 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 and just walk all the way around. Let's, let's read on for we offend somebody. And in all things we do offend. Read. From the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. <coughs> you shall not consent unto him. No hearken unto him. Neither shall your eye pity him. Neither shall you spare. Neither shall you conceal him. But you shall surely kill him. What is it? We y'all keep talking about killing folks. Read on. Your hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. Isn't that something? Oh, by the way, back to the false prophets, right? And he did all this rhetoric talking and they couldn't tell you one thing that I said wrong or did wrong. You're at least supposed to have an indictment, right? Come up with something. We're waiting to hear it. Give us the punchline. Just stir it up. And you know women stir up men today? Whew. Ooh, wee. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, teach, read Jeremiah 23, verse 16 to 31. Everybody doing all right? When you have it, go ahead and read. Thus says the master of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, they make you vain. They speak a vision of their own <coughs> heart and not out of the mouth of Yah. They say, steal unto them that despise me. Yah has said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walks after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Ain't that what's happening today? People walking out the imagination of their own heart. Nobody wants accountability. Come on. For who has stood in the counsel of Yah and has perceived and heard his word? 
Who has marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of Yah is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of Yah shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them away from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a Elohim at hand, said Yah, and not an Elohim afar off? Can any hide himself in a secret place that I shall not see him, says Yah? Do not I feel heaven and earth, says Yah? I have heard what my prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yeah, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Hey, Y'all know out in Christianity, they be dropping, thus said the Lord, all over the place. They be lying their ass off. I mean lying. You got people that had thriving businesses and stuff, and, and, and somebody will prophesy to them, the Lord said... God told me to tell you, you're going to be a mighty man of God. Then you got to go online to fingers to get a bachelor's degree or a preaching degree. And now you done lost your business. You're in the poor house. Ain't just true, Mother Nelly? People get prophesied, man, they drop the name. They don't say, y'all, Lord, you know, God, but they still dropping them. Dropping it left and right, deceiving the hearts of people. Read on. The prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chapter of the wheat says, Yah? Is not my word like a fire, said Yah? And like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, said Yah, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, said Yah, that use their tongues and say, he said. You better make sure it's coming from him, right? Behold, I am against the prophets. Uh, that I'm against them that prophesied falsely dreams saying Yahweh and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness yet I sent them not nor commanded them therefore they shall not profit this people at all say of Yahweh now we are in the time now as soon as someone departs from Israel the first thing they do is pick up the phone and speak to the ones that they can Deceive. Example of those who boast themselves to be somebody over in the book of Acts. But before those days, before these days, rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men of about 400 joined themselves who were slain. And all as many as obeyed him were and brought to how many times have we seen that happen here? Hmm? 
they all get together. Within six months, they all <laughs> gone. Bought to not, they ain't even in communication with each other no more. Same thing, nothing new under the sun. And after this man rose up, Judas the Galilee, and in those days of taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were. You see these actions? And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to what? Not. But if it be of Elohim, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily you be found even to fight against Elohim. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, now, I don't know about that one right now. That must have been a hell of a lot of them to take an ass whooping. You understand what I mean? Because we in a time now, we're giving ass whoopers. We ain't taking no ass whoopers. But that's what happened back then. They, that back then, they were just beating folks. Can y'all imagine these Gentiles that they just think because they don't like what we're saying, they're going to try to come and beat us? <laughs> <laughs> but they used to beat them up back then and now the Christians think that if you get beat up that you're doing a just thing for the word where this doctrine come in from who you call that suffering for the name of Jesus No, your flesh is suffering, but you ain't suffering for Jesus. See the crazy doctrine? We just got finished being warned by scripture that if somebody rise up amongst us and try to deceive somebody and turn them away, kill them. Now, I know what happened. There was a hell of a lot more of them than it was the apostles, so they had no choice because they, they had to get their butt whooped. That they, and then they commanded them they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now in that time, what you going to do against the Romans though? You're going to take an ass whooping. Remember, sometimes you better take a loss. Live to fight another day. Which one is better? A dead lion or a live dog? You don't know? Never mind. I ain't telling you if you got the revelation then. Which one come first, the chicken or the egg? Something you don't even know. I can't believe it. You in Israel and don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg? I asked that same question to Sister Carol's all educated 5,000 degree sister to the 20,000 power. She missed brain. You just couldn't believe the kind of brain on this woman. I said, yeah, you're intelligent, ain't you? Say, what comes first, a chicken or egg? I'm not getting that argument with you. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember that for real? I looked at Carol and go, see, that's education. <laughs> that's what it does. Zechariah connects the prophets with the unclean spirits, meaning demonic powers. Zechariah 3 12, I mean 13 2. And it shall be in that day, declares Yahweh of hosts that I cut off the names of the idols from the earth and they shall be remembered no more and I shall also remove the prophets and the unclean spirits from the earth. Thus far we see that those that are deceived and their actions plus their demonic activity among believers. Yes, people can have whatever they want and many are loaded with demons. Luke the physician diagnosed a woman as having a demonic spirit and she was the daughter of Abraham. Did you hear that? Luke 13, 10 through 16. You hear that? So you can be a daughter of Abraham, meaning you're in Israel and you can still have a spirit. So what's happening today when people refuse to attack Satan's kingdom? 
Because I promise you, there's plenty of work to do. We know that. So what's really, truly happening? You understand what I mean? Read it when you have it. <laughs> Everybody, you got, there's a lot of people out with that crazy bug junk. Then you know, see the reason why I was talking about that air fit face thing last night, right? I'm going I'm to find something. I am. I'm going to find something. You don't have to find us uh, some HIPAA bubbles for all of us to wear a bubble suit to <laughs> I'm going to find something to kill all this airborne stuff. I am. I'm on it. I am on it. Read. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and can, could in no wise lift up herself. Have y'all ever seen people that's got all them? You ever seen somebody's got a real bad hunchback? Did, did that ever come into your mind when you see them? Did they have a spirit of infirmity? Hmm? Hmm? Did it ever come to mind? It always comes to my mind when I see it. I know it's a spirit. When somebody's bent over that bad like that, that is a spirit. You understand? I've actually been up to people and asked them, would you want Jesus to heal? And they said no. And I'll just walk right on. Read. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. All right, hold on. Some more information coming here. Read. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified Yah. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. See? Y'all don't think people are mad today? When they see all that, they can't help but spy on our liberty. So you don't think people are mad today at what they see all the transpiring taking place here? It's the same spirit. They just transcend from generation to generation. Now mind you, key emphasis, the Messiah, he spoke, then he laid hands, and the woman end up being made straight. Y'all got that, right? He just didn't speak. In this instance right here. All right? Read. Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Isn't that hypocritical? So as smart as the Messiah is, and he is. Read. And said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Messiah then answered him and said, You hypocrite! Does not each one of you own the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Where does it tell you in the law, since he's being so staunch, that you don't heal nobody on the Sabbath day? You understand what I mean? You see what, you see what, what Yahshua had to do? Now, if he called him a hypocrite, do you think it was very pleasant? Okay, keep reading. Oh, oh, man. Israel, it is critical for you to comprehend your vulnerability to demonic influence. I'm going to slow this down a little time. Israel, it is critical for you to comprehend your vulnerability to demonic influence. See, just because you feel something don't mean you can just start spouting off and just acting any old kind of way and doing everything. You, you know, we're charged to have self-control. Y'all hearing this? Satan seeks to corrupt your minds. 2 Corinthians 11, 3 says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his what? 
subtlety being, being tricked, right? So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Messiah. So let Satan should get an advantage over us or, or of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now Israel, I know the many things <coughs> many of you are struggling with. I promise I do. But I can tell when you are bound, deceived, hiding, running, dirty, etc. How many times have I told you a certain nature and expose you. There are certain ways you act and there are certain ways you do not act when demonic activity is there. You understand that? That allow those who are discerning spirits to see you very clearly. I often say, just because I do not say anything does not mean I do not know what's going on. And I mean, that's also for very discerning brothers and sisters too. The Father knows us, yet in this word, we can clearly see he gives everyone time to turn unto judgment comes. Remember, one witness or one person's word cannot testify against another. Satan, this dead past season, is trying to do everything he can to get everyone to look at straightway sideways, even through their even though their, their ways are corrupt. Then he will work on trying to get you to look at your pastor sideways so that you can be offended. Watch Israel. Watch really good. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> now I'm planning on I don't know how many times I offer, but I am planning on uh, maybe between blog talk and service and stuff to go over some of these passages that um, is commonly misunderstood uh, so that we will be informed even the more so, if you know what I mean, because they just don't jump out at you. You really truly have to be a student of the word. But since you come to class, service, <laughs> you understand what I mean? And you're listening, it could save you a lot of time, energy, and effort. But you still, in order for it to get in your heart, you're still going to go back and look at it. You understand what I mean? I hope that you do too, all right? But don't think that just because you've gotten deliverance 10 times that you finish with deliverance. I hear people... Um, so, matter of fact, whispers get to me. I don't never see Pastor Dow get deliverance because you ain't never around when I'm getting delivered. I mean, do I need to get up here and, and scream, holler, shout, and flip around and flop around and cuss you out and everything else just so you can see I can get delivered? I mean, if I've been doing deliverance for about 25 years, do you think I got the same problems you have? <laughs> now, y'all listening? Yes, sir. I keep telling y'all. This generation is far behind the way we started deliverance. And I mean way behind. There was not a day that went by that we wasn't in the tabernacle or somewhere getting deliverance. Not on this community. It was going on two, three times a day, every day for years, including services. All the time. Well, I wasn't there. That's the problem. I mean, if I'm still getting the same level of deliverance as I was when I first started this, I got problems. Some of you are afraid of the devil. That's why you don't ever get no deliverance. You bring in your philosophies and, and, and all your uh, great orator sayings and and I'm looking, looking right at the devil. Go contrary to the book. Everybody got devils, but Brother Daryl. Everybody got devils, but Brother McNabb. Isn't that right? Everybody got them. Not them two, they holy, they sanctify. You know, I'm using y'all for an example, right? But the shoe fit wear, damn it. <laughs> you understand what I mean? And I still have never met a person. It's, it's, I said, I have never met a person that didn't have an abundant supply of them. So just because you ignore them don't mean anything ain't there. Mm -hmm. 
And I do know this, life is not going to get better until you deal with them. But see, there's something different about people who get deliverance and really pursue it and actively. Those people are warriors. They're, they're not afraid of the battle or the fight. There's a lot of people you would look at and would never think that they were a warrior. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, well, Frogman don't look like no warrior, does he? He just look like a regular old brother. He a warrior. <laughs> See his name? Looks are deceiving. Very humble, very humble face. But when you get out there and get to training with him, boy, all of a sudden he turns into another man. Y'all be sitting up there thinking, what happened to him? Turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Are you following me? So just because just people look a certain way don't mean looks are deceiving. Hallelujah. Now Daniel Muir, he looked like he looked like somebody you don't want to see in no alley at night. Even if he smiled at you in the alley at night, it looks bad. And Daniel got a very cheerful smile. But boy, I tell you, you be like, uh-uh. Uh-uh, I ain't playing this. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kabir don't look like no warrior. I don't think Kabir could even put on a face and scare nobody. He just don't look like it. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, hope y'all learned something. Let the words of my mouth. Meditation of heart. Be acceptable in our sight. Oh, yeah. My strength, my redeemer, dismiss in beautiful name of Jesus the Christ, soon coming king. Shabbat shalom. Look at him looking.